What's with all the birds in the stream? This is some more uh, royalty-free music that I'm listening to on YouTube. Uh, unfiltered, I didn't check it before. I got the webcam working. fine I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn the music off you can't hear my voice it should be better now testing one two let me get the uh... microphone make sure it's all the way all the way up that'll help a lot probably a bit loud now T testing one two how's that sound that's probably pretty good Coffee. Okay, welcome to the Artiboy live dev stream. Uh, I am Kevin Bates, creator of the Artiboy, and uh, I'm joined here today by Mr. Blinky. He is the creator of the Artiboy Flash Mod. It is an external flash memory modification for the Artiboy that adds uh, 128 kilobyte. Wait, bit? Oh, I can't remember. But it adds about 8 megabytes, right? I think that's about it. But it adds a bunch of mem yeah, 128 megabits to um, Artiboy's storage. So that's quite a bit. Um, I've got a few things here to show. Um, this is the Artiboy uh, Ardu Crank mod. I'll show that in a minute. Um, and then I've got, still in my backpack, give me a second. I put this together just a, like 30 minutes ago or so at the office. And rushed back over here. So this is, uh, let's see, I have a full screen view here. Um, this camera is like quite terrible at autofocusing close up but it'll do it eventually right Come on you pile of garbage <sighs> there's a trick I had before about getting this thing to autofocus up close but it's not really cooperating yeah I know it's too blurry this sucks There we go. Jesus. Um, let me go turn on the lights in here. I think that'll. I think I have the lights off. So this is uh, like the original development kit, but it's got the flash chip and a, uh, a little reset button for um, some advanced features that we can show off today. Let me go turn on the lights. And the lights are on in here. The camera just sucks. <laughs> Okay, so I guess you can kind of see it now. Um, so what we'll cover today is mostly kind of review stuff. So I'm going to show off some of the features that I showed off in the uh, YouTube video for the crank mod and kind of narrate through it. And then I'm going to show off how to do step-by-step -step, uh, development. Um, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to, um, we're basically just going to load information on the external um, flash cart. I'm going to do it first with just one application, and then I'll do one where I show how the, um, the cart is compiled uh, and the memory format for that and stuff like that. So uh, if you have any questions along the way, I have Twitch chat open over there, and I'll respond to people's questions. And that's really kind of what this is about, is, is answering your guys' questions um, if anybody... Um, you know, needs any help on the development. So let's go back to 
this. Okay, so actually, no, I guess what the full screen, because I'm just going to show off the, I'm going to show off the crank one here, so to get it to focus, you send one. I think it has like AI in the camera, so if there's like a face in the screen, it'll like automatically, there we go. Come on. Yeah, there we go. So this is Arduboy Crank Mod. It is running the um, it is running the uh, same bootloader as the flash cart. So if you um, if you navigate with the arrow buttons, it gets you into a menu. Uh, I only have like one category, so these are all in the same category, and I don't have a category title. Um, so they're just all in there together. So you can you can scroll through them like this. You can go back to the menu. Um, and then if you press the B button, it'll uh, it'll flash the game. So Square is a game that actually I I barely got started. Like I did just a few lines of code to get it working, and then my friend Chris uh, did the rest of the code and really like you know turned it what it is in today. Uh, Chris is a really good friend of mine. Actually, I just played music with him. We were kind of in a band together when Art of Boy got popular. And then I bugged him to like, you know, because he, he knew how to code and stuff. I bugged him to do some development. But it was never really, he was really never really that into it. I mean, he was just my friend and kind of doing me some favors. But that's why he dropped off on the development. But what I did is I went ahead and modified it so that uh, when you move forward on the crank, it holds, it basically it runs, it jumps, and moves forward all at the same time. And then if you move it back the other way, it, uh, it um, moves the other way. And the reason, kind of the reason why I thought this would be a fun implementation of the crank is because actually one of the easy ways to play Squareo is just to kind of hold run and left and press a jump button and just kind of hope for the best. I mean, obviously there's more, there's more to it than that, but this kind of proves that concept. And that on this seed, that one will, will that, like, that's where you need to have some more better controls. Um, so I coded or I uh, put the reset button to be the button on the rotary encoder, which I just have now discovered is coming loose. Oh no! I have to repair it. Artiboy Live repairs. Okay, and then, um, hold on a second. This is hard to do from I need to get like a second uh, a second webcam or something so I can do the demos and just hold it down. Because you guys don't really need to look at me. You just need to look at the Arda boy. Um, so this is a tackle box that I modified the rotary encoder to make it so that when you go... Uh, oh, man. Focus. Focus. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. When you when you turn the rotary encoder, it'll simulate. You can turn it either way, but it'll simulate pressing like it's the B button or whatever, either button to reel it in. So that's, that one's a pretty cool one. Um, other demos uh, was the sprite demo, which I didn't load because I pressed A instead of B. So the sprite demo is uh, something that um, Mr. Blinky put together, and it's got a bunch of sprites in the background moving around, and you can um, you can add or remove balls with A or B, and so I just made it so that you can add them with the crank to quickly get at kind of the frame max, which I think he said was 55, was where you still maintain a 60 frame, a solid 60 frames per second, uh, but you can go more than that if you don't mind, a slower frames per second. I just went to 128 before I ran out of RAM. But those sprites are all being, I mean, they're addressing the same memory space. So they're kind of duplicates, but they are all individually calling from the external memory when they uh, when they need to make their draw routine. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Okay. And so one of the things that I want to do today, if we can, is try to put um, unique sprites for each of those so that you can uh, you can really see that they're all different. Yeah, I need to figure out a better way to hold up the webcam. Hold on a second, I'm gonna... 
I just do like sorry. Is this this doesn't work? I need like a little tripod. Yeah, I'll have to get like a little tripod to hold it up so you, I can just do the webcam like this because that's way that's way better. All right. Well. Oh, I have one. I have one. Yeah, short break. Give me, give me, give me like a, uh, give me like a minute. I'm gonna get a a, a little tripod to hook up. So back to this and some more uh, royalty-free ambient music. excuse me I'm pretty new but doing this whole live stream stuff so this is also a learning experience for me but okay cool so this is way better um, seems to autofocus mm, pretty decent come on buddy I think glare is an issue yeah that's good um, but yeah so um, you can also move the tile sheet Pretty cool. Like you're on a little map. Um, and then the last demo is probably my most favorite. 
is oh, I pressed A. Um, it runs a full motion video, and it's oh god, this is such a pain in the ass. This was better in concept than it was in practice because this is like a gigantic pain in the ass to sit here and crank this thing all the time. But it's pretty cool because it just goes frame by frame as you move the rotary encoder. And anybody from like the past, like this is was this reminds me of high school or something like that. These were really big like 20 years ago, I guess, is like the GIF format kind of was like a new form of art. Um, Mr. Blinky is asking why I didn't why I turn on and off the Art of Boy and pressing the reset button. It's just because of habit. I'm not used to having a reset button on the crank. Uh, the reset button allows you to go to the bootloader menu. And um, if you don't have an accessible, like if you haven't modded your Art of Boy, the only way to get at the reset button is this thing. And so uh, kind of the default way of getting at that is um, just turning on and off. That's how it will be for the Art of Boy FX. You know, if you run a mod chip, um, you'll just have to turn it on and off real quick to get the bootloader. So this is pretty cool. You can go backwards too. Backwards and forwards. So um, this is yeah, this is like a really cool animation um, for me to see on the Art of Boy. I think it's it's better if it just auto plays. Uh, which I don't think I have implemented. Uh, yeah, this is this is the other function within this app. It shows you these um, the flash. What status? What does that mean, Mr. Blinky? So this is like the uh, ID of the chip, but I don't know what the status is. Bald engineer, I can probably manually focus my webcam. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that after this stream and try to learn better the software tools for my uh, webcam, because like a hold focus would be really nice. What does a status register value mean? What does it indicate? Like, does that mean like write mode enabled or something like that? Or like, would you get an error there or something like that? Like, did you get error message or is that like write mode enabled? Like, don't like sequential write or something like that. Six means output driver 25%. What does that mean? Output driver. You mean like the, you can set the strength of the transistors? What? Anyways, okay, getting getting kind of sidetracked here. So those are the functions of the flashcard as exists on the Artiboy crank mod. So uh, what we'll cover today is a little bit how to bring all this stuff up that I've done onto this one onto uh, the development kit. So the development kit it's just like an Arda boy that has had the um, flash chip uh, already installed uh, on it. Uh, it's just all baked onto one. Um, focus. Well, let me go into the secure. <gasps> Auto focus. Oh, here it is, yeah. Can I keep this window open? I can. Cool. Okay, so if I want to try to like set the focus manually again, but it seems like it's got it. But this doesn't have a power switch, so that's why the screen isn't on, and the buttons are all wonky because I thought I had different buttons. But anyways, uh, if you remember the original developer kit, um, this is uh, kind of the same thing. Auto oh, focus. Can I... Can I just like, I'm just gonna stick it. Can I like leave it on a decent focus, but I... Oh, that's really close. Too close. Um, hardware output string, so go figure it. Let's set this at like a decent... I'm manually focusing right now on let's see. Okay, that's like a good distance. So if I want it to be in focus, I'll just bring it back to about here. All right, um, so let me bring you back to my um, 
scene here. So uh, when I want to do development on this thing, actually, I have to keep referring back to the notes because oops. What have I done? I keep referring back to the notes that I made when Mr. Blinking the first time because, yeah, I don't actually have a clue on what I'm doing. So that's why I think a lot of people will find these sessions to be helpful. So if you don't have anything loaded onto the, uh, the flash cart, uh, this is what will happen when it boots up. Uh, for the first time is you'll get uh, where are you at um, you'll get this USB boot logo and so we want to get rid of that uh, Twitch chat Old bootloader. No, it should be the new bootloader. I just downloaded it fresh from the... Uh, I downloaded it fresh from the repo. Why do you say old bootloader? Mr. Blinky. Oh, is that bad? What does the LED flashing mean? Maybe this isn't actually going to work because I, you know, I haven't tested this. What does the LED flashing mean? Maybe none of this will work and we'll have to abort. Or I guess I can just do it all on the crank mod version. So we'll go to the community page. We'll go to the thread that I'm actually running this out of here. And we're actually just going to do a review of the stuff that we did last time. Um, let me zoom in for those of you who can't read this. It's an old bootloader. Thought you said you updated your bootloaders on the thing. I went. I went to here. I went here, and then to Kathy, and then to three K, and this one. Holy shit! Yeah, seven. This isn't updated. Which one did you update? This is ten months ago. Um, where's the one that is updated not 10 months ago? Is that somewhere else? Is it like... Master? Hmm? What are you talking about? Oh shit! The new boat loader's in this? Not here? Is that correct? I mean, it must be. How come you're updating here, not here? Yeah, why? Why is it in homemade? How come you haven't made updates to the to this to here to this one? Are they? I guess are they just two? Have you forked it now? Well, main package. Wait, what? Homemade package tree. How do you know if you're in the... the fuck? Ooh! 
Okay, well, I've just discovered that uh, for all the times that Mr. Blinky told me he updated his bootloader, I've been going to the wrong place in his GitHub to get the bootloader. Uh, apparently, if you want to get the most up-to-date bootloader, you want to get it from here, which is not. Hey, yeah, look at that. Updated three days ago. That is significantly newer than... That's significantly newer than 10 months. Cool. Uh, um, okay, so for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, uh, this is what we did on the very first uh, stream is basically got our environment set up. We installed Arduino, we installed Python, we downloaded uh, this, we downloaded uh, this, this uh, repo right here, which includes the utilities, it includes the bootloader, which is, uh, I've come to find outdated, uh, but it also includes some example uh, flash carts, some example code. Um, you'll need to install the Artivoid 2 library, and then, yeah, that allows us, from that point, you can start to run some of these, um, some of these tests. So we'll do that, we'll actually go ahead and run that flash cart test uh, on this uh, on the dev kit. So we've got the directory here, and we can go to this test sketch. And this is just a normal Arduino sketch. It doesn't actually, we're not actually interfacing with the memory card directly yet. What we're going to do for, is we're going to load a sketch onto the Artivoy that, um, oops, make it a little bigger. I don't know, we're actually not reading this, but what this will do is run an Arduino sketch that will, well, if it, it'll, it'll confirm that it's able to communicate with the, uh, flash cart. So we'll go ahead and upload. That's probably going to be on the wrong port. Ah, I got it in time. It's uploading. Oh uh, yeah, I emitted the RX and TX lights. Oh, nuts. Do we got a problem? Oh no. Oh, what is this blinking light? Flash card is not initialized. Oh, that's the new... And you soldered the RGB LED wrong? No, I didn't. It would, not all the colors would work. Should be... Uh, it's, it's, it's... The, the RGB LED is wired correctly, but uh, which one is red, green, and blue is probably different. Um, because when you saw when it was in, like, uh... Oh, no shit, you're wrong. That shit's backwards. Fuck me. Yeah, that's backwards. There's no red LED. Ah! Is it really? Oh, my God. I'm trying to look on the silk screen. The fuck? I saw I have it soldered correct according to the silk screen and the what in the heck I, I don't know what's going on I guess I guess I have like a weird package or something like that because it's like it's line it's lined up correctly I guess my documentation's incorrect yeah well anyways that's super cool that's not easy to fix no I, I do now that I got this like soldered up and wired up, you know, this was a problem they had in the factory. So I don't know if like sometimes like the indicator is flipped or maybe my board layout is totally wrong. I might be using, I think I'm using an old, uh,
Yeah, maybe. I think I'm using an old uh, footprint. I think I'm using a footprint that I used before that... No, I thought I copied that out of the production version. Hey, well, anyways, we're getting off off the, the, the LEDs backwards. That's good to know. I'll know to try to flip that before I put it into production. Check the data sheet. I ain't got data sheets for this thing. I don't have data sheets. This is just like out of a box of stuff that I found in China. So anyway, so... Um... What we need to do now, actually, so I guess there's a step now uh, in this code that requires it to have the flash cart be initialized. So how do we initialize use the flash writer? So this, this guide is actually kind of out of date because we will need to update that. Because initialization. So what do we use to do on the flash cart writer? Do you just like run it once or something? Or is there is there's probably a code, huh? Do I just like flash any old data to it or write an it write an image? So you have to use that now. So So really we should do this. So this this will change. Whoops, not my word, just do WordPad. Oh man, it got rid of all the numbering. Okay, but we actually need to do is that can run to here. No, but we'll need to put this first. Uh, wouldn't it make sense to just go ahead and this I'm not so sure I'm on board with having this cart initialization mode this kind of sucks this forces you to do some different stuff you might as well upload the video to test the well I guess I don't know what to do, man. Like, I guess I'll just upload this. Yeah, I know it's because of the library update, but I don't know if it's a good idea. I, I guess it kind of makes sense that you want to warn people. But it just means that you can't run this test until you've uploaded data. So it's like it's pointless of running it as a test. Because you have to, like, do everything before... Is there a way that we can write the flashcard test so that... It doesn't. Well, I know you need to flash data, but is there some way we can write a small, some small application that, without having to write anything to it, it just runs a sketch that'll confirm whether or not the communication is valid or not? Because now, if I try to write it and it doesn't work, then that's my error message. But it would be kind of nice if the application just, uh, you know, couldn't couldn't address it. Because now I'm just like I'm just brute forcing the test if it works, and if it fails, it fails. But. Um, okay, so I think as long as we just have an application that we can run that with like basically that you can run on, I think there should be an application that you can run on an uninitialized un un memory cart, like just a normal Arduino application that will check the communication with the flash cart so that before you burn anything to it just as a, like a you know a test 
you can confirm that the system's working. Um, but I guess just trying to write to it will work also. So the way that we'll do this is the content that we want to write is actually up here in Oh no, my folder. Son of a bitch. Uh, so what Mr. Blinky is saying is that when the the way the library works right now is that when the Artiboy, when you first bring it up and there's nothing on the external memory, this is like this. This should be blinking red and not green because I soldered in the LED backwards, but uh, what it's telling us is that there's no data already written on the flashcard, and so it's refusing to. The, basically, the library checks that. So as soon as the game boots up, it won't even run the code. It'll just go into this error mode. And um, so the way that we use the flash utilities, there's two ways you can use it. You can use it from the command line, but lately. What I've been doing is after you install Python and then set it as a path directory, you can just drag and drop uh, what you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, uh, I don't know, if this, does this need to be reset? This probably needs to be in the bootloader mode. So I'm going to drag this bin file, not that bin file, this bin file because it's small. This is the, this is the, this is the sprite data for the uh, ball test game. Um, so we'll go ahead and flash that one on there. The way we'll do that is just drag and drop that onto this flash cart writer um, Python. Cool. So it seems like that that didn't work either. And it might be my soldering. I mean, maybe I soldered something wrong or I have a bridge here too. Wait, he said that doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Is it doesn't, do you need to actually have a cart in there with like the title and everything? Like, so, uh, where is it? Like, like this, this will work. See, that's what I mean. This is too many steps to take in order to just confirm whether or not the, the your thing is working. So, I vote that I vote that we remove that either remove this function from the library or just make it so that it doesn't lock the Artiboy, where maybe it just flashes. No, you can't really do that. Maybe can you bypass it? Maybe that's one way to do it is that if it gets in this mode and it's blinking like this, then you press a button and it bypasses this mode. I don't know. I just want to test the application. I just want a way to make sure that I've built something that doesn't... I think I've communicated my my desires. Um, okay, so let me open this. So uh, Okay, so what Mr. Blinky is telling me is the reason why this is not running... Uh, this should be the red LED flashing. Is the library is checking to see if the flash card is initialized? It is not initialized because there's no cart image. What I just burned onto there was just raw data. But what the library is looking for is it's actually looking for a signature that cr when you when you load a full cart with the menu and all the addressing for the different games that are on there, which is within this flash card image here, uh, that will actually allow the library um, to work. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll drag this fully compiled flash cart, which we'll show you how to make later, into the flash cart writer Python. And it'll take a little bit of time because it has like a video and stuff in there. Um, so yeah, that's what it looks like when you're bootloading your Artiboy. 
Man, I really wish that I would have fl put my LED on the right way. That really makes me sad. <laughs> um, nine people. In. Nine people, man. I guess we're averaging more than we did last time. How's everything going in, in the in the stream, everybody? Following along, any questions? Um, anything you're looking forward to seeing? Anything that I can cover? Any questions? Did Does anybody have any Arda Boys they're waiting on shipping to them? Or any Air of the Grievances? So it's still flashing, still flashing. Uh, so this has, this has the video. This has the door video in there, which is why it takes quite a while. Oh, and this is the old bootloader too. So the new, um, Mr. Blinky, correct me if I'm wrong, but the new bootloader actually should flash faster, I think. Yeah, Mr. Blinky confirms he is, uh, what is the speed increase? What, is it like twice as fast or something? How much faster is the new uh, baud rate? Twice as fast. Cool. Well, wow. Okay. So what we just did is we loaded uh, onto this little chip here the um, a flash cart with all wait with with a few games on it. Oh, my mistake. This this is actually, this has got a bunch of games on it. I don't think this actually has the, yeah, this doesn't actually have the video. So the flash cart works. Um, so we'll press reset. And this brings us to our menu. Oh, gosh, I just pressed A. So reset. Um, yeah, so we were just on flash cart test. Oh, man, these buttons are terrible. <laughs> They got fried um, when I was uh, building. I left the the heat, like what do you call it, the, the torch on it, or maybe it's the there's too much resin still in there. Like this, these are monsters to build. Oh, I pressed A. I gotta press B. In the new bootloader, you can press A or B on a menu selection to load the game. But in the new bootloader, you just press B. Dude, this is a super old bootloader. It doesn't even have the, the progress bar. So, yeah. So, this is going to be the function of the... Um, as Artiboy FX, is this being called? Let's see if I can get a better focus here. It's auto focus again. No autofocus. It'd be cool if the autofocus just worked better. That would be rad. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. So yeah, so the Artiboy FX will work this way. So you just you press reset or you turn on and off the device and then you'll be able to navigate through, you know, your favorite games. These are kind of organized according to the different developers. So these are all games that are made by Jonathan Holmes or Crate. Uh, these are all the ones that are made by Team ARG. Well, not all the ones, but a few. And then you just press a button. Um, and the new, the new, the new code. My oh, speaker's working. I think the actual Artiboy is louder than this. It's interesting. So yeah. Okay, um, so what I wanted to show you today was the process of actually how you create uh, what I just showed you, um, this flash cart. So let's go back to our, uh, so I'm just going to have to update this whole thing again. So 
So, I go back to my notes here. Okay, so basically all these individual tests aren't really that useful anymore. Well, this is kind of interesting. So this is this if you haven't seen it, I've got the actual physical one of it right here, which I've chopped up a little bit. Um, but what this is, is this is a little flexible circuit, um, like a uh, mod chip, basically, I guess you could say. Dude, this mother effer will not focus. <laughs> um, and then you can solder that on your existing Artiboy. You just open up the back and you solder onto the test points and uh, it'll come preloaded with all the games. So all you need to do is b burn a new bootloader on. So you need like another Arduino or something like that. But this will include all the Artiboy games and you can put it on the inside. So I'll be selling these at some point and then I'll also be selling the Artiboy with this pre-installed by the factory with some extra special games that you can't get yet that'll be announced soon and it'll have like the laser engraved FX on the back of the um, aluminum back and in addition to that we will have a uh, it'll be serialized so like the original Kickstarter where they were all one of 10,000 but this one what we'll do is take I want to take a hex value so I'll take like um, one out of however many you know units that they won't be serialized so like number you know if you're number one you won't get hex value one which is kind of the reason why I want to do hex value because it kind of, I mean, you have to op. It's not really obvious. You don't just see one, two, three, and then be like, oh, I'm number one or number two. Um, I mean, obviously, if you're FFFFF or whatever, you know, that's kind of easy to say. But anyways, there'll be a unique hex value on each one, so everyone will have a unique uh, hex value identifier on the final Artiboy FX for the dev kits that I'm making. Um, by hand, I'm going to make a couple of these and then I'm going to, uh, like this one I think is going to go to Mr. Blinky and I'm going to write his name oh, right here. And there's like a, it's like this cool falcon um, thing in the, in the silk screen. How close can I focus? That close. Um, yeah, so anyways. How do we make a flash cart? So it's actually really easy, it's super easy. You just you make a CSV file, and uh, and I had one. What happened with the the live stream one? I don't know, I must have moved it. Okay, but anyways, what we'll do is we'll use the example, well, I'll just show you how the one that we just uploaded. So what is a flash cart? I hate Excel. Open in... So in order to create the flash cart, we've built a utility that compiles all the games, not compiles the games, it takes the games hex, pre-compiled hex data. Mr. Blinky has built a utility that takes the, all the hex files that are listed here. Let me, let me zoom in so you can read that a little better. All right. This stream didn't go very well. I'm gonna have to probably do an offline one to actually show what we need to do. There's too many learning events that happened live. So this CSV file takes all the hex files that you want to load into the game. It takes a PNG file to create the image in the uh, menu. Uh, the description isn't used for now. I mean, that's for reference. The list value tells you where to sort it. And then the data file is, uh, if, it, if the application uses an external memory, 
uh, select the video player um, where that is stored. So, how many people are watching still? How many do we have enough people drop off? We still got nine people watching. Okay. So we can kind of look at the directory structure for this. Um, so like Ardeboy Loader here is just in the root directory. And that's just it. So there is a Python utility that then takes the CSV file then goes and finds this PNG and then encodes that into the binary file so that it can load all that up at once. Um, so we can see that uh, the team ARG games are in this folder and when it doesn't have a hex file that just means it, it's like a menu screen can't actually load a game with it uh, so the first one that we see that has a game is for art adventure and that's screenshot zero zero and there we go we can see that that's art adventure so what? What should we do? Why don't we add a game to this cart? Say we have a favorite game that we're like somebody released a new game and you want to add it to your flash cart. We can do that. So in this case, I actually was looking through a GitHub for Team ARG, and they have had some games that are in development and otherwise unreleased. So let's go ahead and add a. Uh, let's go ahead and add that to the flashcard. It is called uh, Escaper Droid. We'll add it here. So one means that it'll be displayed in the list along with the Team ARG games. The description is only used for us, maybe would be used in the future. But uh, so what we'll do is we need to we need to make a PNG file. But let's go ahead and move the hex file over there. Into the folder with all these other ones, and we'll name it something a little bit better. Oh, do they, are they all named like that? Yeah, I guess they're all named like that. Or no, they're not. I know dash Ardenboy. Weird. Okay, uh, so we'll take that. So this is our hex file. This is a, this is a pre-compiled version of the game that was written. Uh, we want to make sure we include the directory structure. And we need to make a uh, we need to make a title image for this. Um, the easiest way to, that I like to do that, and I think this is how Mr. Blinky was doing it too, is just go into the um, the Artiboy emulator and take a screenshot that way. So if you haven't seen it, this is the Artiboy emulator. Um, I don't actually know a way to get straight to the emulator. I do something like this and click on it. And then you can click and drag. And there you go. So we can hit, what is it? Um, P for PNG, save a file right there. And let's move it to the desktop. So this is going to be our uh, title screen. Actually, we'll clean it. We'll clean it up a little bit. So we'll open this up in Photoshop. How's chat doing? No, uh, yeah. So Mr. Blinky was going 120. I didn't know there was an emulator. Well. The emulator is only on like the front page of every game ever. So if you like go to a game and then you like, oops, and then you like go 
to the top post. Like. Yeah, so any game that is in Articoy now, you can go to the head post and then there's an emulator uh, embedded within the... Uh, so you can play Artiboy games. But some of them run a little bit faster, some of them run a little bit slower. It's not exactly one-to-one. -one. And I forgot where the sword is. I think it's down. Anyways, we're getting distracted. So anyways, so I'll open Photoshop. I'll load in this. Uh, as Mr. Blinky said earlier, that we need to make sure that it's the right resolution. Yeah, sound isn't emulated well because it's emulated like bit for bit. Uh, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And, uh, whoa, and just do that. Which did something weird with transparency, so I'll just do that. Okay, so uh, what you got to do is set it to index color, just set it to black and white. And then we'll just go ahead and save it. So what we did is we created a 128 by 64 pixel 1 bit PNG that we want to use for the uh, for the logo here. So we'll move that in here. And it looks like we're using dashes. So here, escape or droid. Okay, so this is the new entry that we've made. It's got the 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 PNG and the hex file. And we save this in our uh, CSV file. And it's actually a CSV file that is uh, separated by semicolons and not commas. Uh, maybe just for fun here, let's, let's edit. Which one are we using here? Let's edit Artiboy Loader. Let's edit this one just for fun. Simple Tyro, what's up, man? Hello. Hope everything's going in. I know this 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 stream is a little random and all over the place. Previous ones kind of ended up being a little more organized. This one, uh, not so much. So just to kind of like show off where we're at on this, we'll just go ahead and do like, just for fun. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, how do we do this? This is a... Uh, We still in? Let's just go to RGB for now. Will that fit? No. Whatever. So we'll do that, and then. Um, So what I did is I, I modified the Artiboy loader up PNG that this uh, the CSV pointed to just so that it's different so that when we load it up it'll be very obvious that we're using the cart that we modified in our live stream. So this is kind of the probably the mo the most important thing that you need to realize are these these utilities right here. It's a flash cart builder and flash cart writer. Uh, flash cart builder is what you'll use. So when you take this CSV file, I think once you find the CSV file and you see um, how it's put together. Uh, it's very obvious, I think, how to construct your uh, flash cart. Um, probably of most interest right here is if you have a, 
Um, oh, actually, I should probably I'll cover this next on actually how you implement these. But uh, in an application that has external memory, you put the bin file out here, and then you put the hex here. When you when you uh, create the hex file, it addresses a specific space of memory where this is stored. And what the tool does, what this, the more advanced features that what this uh, builder does, is it doesn't just compile, it doesn't just sequentially load all these bin files in. This builder application, what it actually does, is finds if it's an app if it's an application that is external memory, it it addresses a vector within the hex file that stores the memory address for where this external memory begins in flash and then it actually modifies it actually modifies the values within the hex to change that memory location to a arbitrary setting that you do at compile time to wherever this tool ends up storing this so it's actually modifying hex files as it goes in order to uh, move them to the location where they're at now so that's probably like that's the real trick of how this all kind of comes together. Otherwise, it's just kind of just, you know, sequentially loading in the data, but it's doing more than that, is it's actually modifying the hex files to tell them uh, where the external memory is. So um, the way to create this bin file is very simple. You just drag and drop onto the builder. And it should create a, uh, should create a new image. Yeah, and we can see here that this created this new image just now. And then, can you show me what your Arduino does? All of this stuff right now is happens within the PC. All of these, uh, all of these flashcards. He says, try to run that kind of command line. Yeah, doing this op op operation is done like you don't even have anything plugged in. This is just the PC by itself. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and uh, run that from the command line, just so we can see that there weren't any errors and a more detailed view of what it's doing. Uh, so we will write the uh, flash cart builder, uh, py, I think that works. Oops. Yeah, so flashcard build flashcard builder.py and then space and then you can you can drag and drop here to uh, give you your um, your location of the CSV file. So it looks yeah, it looks like it was successful, no problems. Um so you can see here's the uh, Here's that video file using um, is it six six megabits six megabits that's a lot of bits cool so it worked and then all we need to do we have two options we can drag and drop this bin file into the flash cart writer or we can just um, we can run the command. I'm going to drag and drop it because that's easier. But we go ahead and plug this in. Yeah, this is hella old bootloader that just loads up with the uh, the game straight away. It doesn't even get you into the menu when you turn it on and off. Eh, bytes? Bytes. Wait, was that six megabytes? Then? Oh man, it doesn't even stay in the menu, does it? Um, Mr. Blinky was asking if we saw the escaper droid on the list, and we do. It's right there. So this is where we, we added this, right? So we added this and we modified this. So we expect that when we when we flash this on here, this will be different and then this will be available and things won't be messed up. 
So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just drag this, which was just freshly created, onto the writer application. And it seems like it's working. And that's cool. So how are we doing on that? We got 10 viewers. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Let's see if I recognize anybody. Uh, Mr. Blinky and Bald Engineer. But I think everybody else is like randoms. For people who aren't Mr. Blinky or Bald Engineer, how did you hear about this stream? Was it was it uh, Twitch? Was it Twitter? Facebook? Sunshine Killer is new. Do you have an Arda Boy or did you just see my tweet or what brought you here today? Welcome. We're happy to have you. I searched up development on Twitch in your stream. Wow, man. That's... That's a stretch. Hackaday post. So you what you saw the Hackaday post and followed me on Twitch, or I mean on, on Twitter. Yeah, man. If you want to buy an Arda Boy, definitely look at it. If having all the games all together is something that is a primary reason you're interested in the Arda Boy, we are going to be selling this, you know, like as a you know complete version. But that won't be available for some time. If you want to get at this now, everything's going to be backwards compatible. So if you buy an Artiboy now and you want to modify it later with like this little, um, this little Band-Aid dude, um, that's going to happen as well. So, okay, so it worked. So just go back to the builder. Boom! Look at that. It worked, man. So, focus... Yeah, this is a hella old bootloader that only stays in the bootloader for 15 seconds. So the way that it does it now is it just always comes up and stays there, which is way nicer. Way better. There we go. All right, let's go and find... Um... Oops. <laughs> let's go and find the, uh, the new game, the Unreleased. So, and anybody, unless anybody out there has, like, gone into Team ARG's, like, GitHub and just, like, randomly compiling anything, this is the first time anybody will have seen this. Um, it's a pretty cool little demo. I mean, that's exactly all it is, is right now, is a demo. The gameplay, is, it works. It just, it needs levels. So, um, it's a very cool engine, though. Look at this. I don't think anybody else has built as far as my knowledge, an isometric engine for the Artiboy, and it runs really well. Um, we took some damage, and then you, you like, you go to that thing in the center, and, like, it, I think it's, like, a teleporter or something like that. I don't know. It seems like, yeah, see, because I'm back here, and I just died. <laughs> um, but, then there's, like, a force field on that door, and there's some dudes in here. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, this would make like an awesome, yeah, I suck at this game. I think this would be cool as like a 3D version of Circuit Dude, where you could, uh, you know, move the boxes around like this. But anyways, this game has not, um, been released. It's not even a full game. I mean, where you're seeing, as far as I'm aware, the extent of this game. Um, it looks like it was built a long time ago, and then Yuri just never finished it. He just like, okay, I'm gonna work on other projects and got distracted, because that's like several years old. Um, but yeah, so that's how you go ahead and load the flash cart on there. Um, let's go to the video uh, demo. So this will run that same animation as before. Oh no, this is, oh, this is Bad Apple. Well, that's cool, this is something different. So this is the Bad Apple video, but look at how well this runs. I mean, the frames per second. I think we're running 60 frames per second on this. Fingerprints.
How many frames per second Mr. Blinky is covering? 30. 30 frames per second. That's like a solid... Oh, man, it's so good. This is so good. I, this video is better than showing off that that that's the stick figure one because this is much more in depth video. Um, I'm looking. If anybody out there right now is a pixel artist, I'm out there looking for somebody to create some video animations for the launch of the new hardware so that we can have videos like this um, that we made to run on the Artiboy hardware when it boots up, you know, like some kind of little uh, welcome to Artiboy video. I wonder if the bad, what the rights are on the bad Apple video. I have to look into that. Artiboy could run 120 frames per second if you want. Dude, 30 already looks extremely, like, really good. I mean, where would you even get content at higher frames per second? And then, like, to store all that stuff. Uh, this is, I guess it's not really a demo scene. This is actually, this is a well-known um, Japanese manga, like, music video, I guess. It's very well-known for being kind of used in the demo scene type environment. This gets used as a tech demo a lot to run videos. Like if your system can run a video um, to go ahead and run back. I've never seen the full Bad Apple. I've usually only seen a few seconds. How freaking long is this, dude? This is... This is incredible. I didn't realize this was... No wonder this cart took so long. Does this video fill the cart? Mr. Blinky, is that why this card is so huge? Does this... Yeah, this, is, there's, there's, this isn't running off of the, the, the PC. This is all on the external memory chip. I can't unplug it because this doesn't have a battery, but... Yeah, the vid is 6 megabytes. I don't know if I want to like talk about this right now. Yeah, I guess I kind of do. Um, I really want to get um, a new hope. Star Wars A New Hope to run on the Artiboy on this flash chip. I mean, obviously I can't release that, but um, as a tech demo, I think that would be awesome. Um, even running uncompressed, doing it at like 15 frames per second is pretty freaking close. But uh, yeah, so we're looking at, um, Mr. Blinky's looking at compression for me as like a pet project. Dude, this video is, it's over. That's like, wait, yeah, this is, it's repeating now, right? Is it? Yeah, this is the beginning, right? Yeah, this is the start. Anybody in chat want to see a Star Wars A New Hope running on the Art of Boy? If you do, then you should put an emoji of your choosing into the chat. I want to see some emojis in the chat room if you want to see that. Um, okay, so what we will do now is show you how to uh, work on an application that uses external memory. So this is this is the, the test. This is the application that's running on the Ardeboy right now. And this is the library, this is the working library that Mr. Blinky's been building that enables all of this magic. Give me one moment, I'm gonna take a bite of my croissant. Um, I guess the best way to show you is to use the command line and show you what happens when you just flash uh, some external memory bin on its own. 
So what we'll do is we'll go back to the um, flash cart writer. And what we're going to do is we're only going to take the sprite sheet from the bouncing balls test and uh, flash it to the cart. And obviously that went really quick. And I think I need to use fuck. I need to use dash D, don't I? Mr. Blinky. Yeah, he says use dash D. Dash D stands for developer, and it tell, I guess it tells you where you where it puts it. Yeah. So if you use dash D, it'll tell you the memory location of where it put it. And this is a good example because this shows you how you're able to interact with the external memory. So you create a sprite sheet, and we'll cover that later. Like how do you actually create a .bin file with your graphics in it? But if you can if you can trust me that this uh, drawballs test dot bin creates a bunch of contains a bunch of sprite info, it burns it and then reports back this memory location. Okay, hey, I've put it at you know one one uh, page off of uh, the end of the memory, and so then you'll be able to uh, address this information thusly. So let's open up, let's actually open up that cart or this application. And look at that. Hopefully this is big enough that you can see it. So this application you is being written so that this information that has been stored in this memory location can now be addressed here. The library kind of takes care of the rest. And as I mentioned earlier, when you are, when you've compiled this as a hex file, this program data page is being stored in the vector. So it's being stored in a known memory address within the hex file, so that the uh, the Python the cart builder then can come in and uh, modify this uh, this data. And uh, Mr. Blinky has noted that uh, by doing what I'm doing now, I've corrupted the, the data that's on the flashcard because there should have been something else at this memory address. But we're going to go ahead and just run, uh, flash this code um, because we're going to only directly address this memory. So we'll do that right now. So we'll just uh, upload. I can't believe I installed that LED in backwards. Wait. Save the C-Spinner. So this is... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't like this new, this new initialization check. I, I am against it. So what Mr. Blinky's telling me that I need to reinitialize the do hog with the ding dong and the schmeggle, schmeggle hopper. Fucking shit. So what we will do is we will create flashcard two, and this is just going to be, whoops, that's probably, is that safe to do? I don't know. Like that, I think, right? So what Mr. Blinky's told me is that I need to uh, create a new flashcard that is just the title and then uh, burn. 
that. Yay! Okay, so it needs to have that title screen loaded into there. I guess using dash D obliterates it. Yeah, I would say make it optional or like have a. F I would. My suggestion is is that it's like a flag, and it's like you if your game's done right you're out of development mode or you're not in some kind of a tool you you set a define saying or either way i mean even setting a define to put it you know to remove that feature would be okay because yeah i think the better use case would be that if you add the define in, in a game that's done so that it so that when that define is there it checks for the initialization. So that way, if you're just writing an Arduino sketch to try to address the memory, you you don't run into that gotcha. Not, not using, oh, okay, not using dash D corrupts. So Mr. Blinky told me that the first time I tried to upload the, uh, uh, whoops. So by trying to upload this bin file by drag and dropping it on its own, actually that's what corrupts it. If you do dash D, that will not erase the... F oh, it doesn't erase it. He told me that before. That doesn't erase the chip. And so it just puts the memory at the end. Okay. So... All right. So I guess what we can do now is we can try to modify the data that is in, wait, do you even have, what I'd like to do is I want to modify this or I want to create a new sprite sheet and so that we can have unique uh, sprites for the balls. Can we do that, Mr. Blinky? Assets are on GitHub. Can you link me for convenience? How are we doing in chat? Is this still interesting? Is this boring? Anything I could be doing different? The the goal of doing this video actually today was to uh, can you turn your notifications off? Oh yeah, yeah, this was a problem last time. Um, mixer. Oh, shit. They already are down all the way. I never even set them back up. Um, yeah, this actually wasn't meant to be... What this was meant to be was I was going to record this and then put it on YouTube as like a, uh... Uh... What do you say, like a, uh, a tutorial, but we got so distracted and I got so screwed up. I'm going to have to stay organized and just record a straight up YouTube video uh, where I run through a script. Where Where is that? Uh, where's the. Uh, where's the image converter script? What is my YouTube channel? Um, good question. <laughs> I think it's Art of Boy Inc. Or... Mm. Don't know what my YouTube is. Mm. Sad. <laughs> uh, let me think about this. What the? F Dude, I don't even know what my damn password is. Uh, does anybody else know what my YouTube channel is? <laughs> I 
This is it, but it's like that's you need to have like you need to have like something there, don't you? Hey, no, this is it. This is the channel. I thought it had a a URI, like you could actually. I thought you could just go. Like, why would I have this fucking link in my website if it didn't actually work? I'm. I, I don't know what's. Something, something's broken. This is what I'm talking about, man. Too many things are broken during this stream. Is there an easy way to download all of these files at once? Can I, is there a download all? <laughs> um. And download the whole repo, Merg. <laughs> oh god, whatever. Yeah, raw downloads takes forever. Look it! We got him. So what I want to do is make a bunch of, I want to make more balls, right? Or I want to modify ball. Let's look at tiles. So let's look at tiles. So there's two. So I also need this, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. The tiles. What I like about the tiles, though, is so open up the screen. Um, what I like about the tiles is it's actually a tile sheet because the ball is just a ball, right? Yeah. So, Mr. Blinky has informed me that his is a sprite converter. Uh, application is designed so that you can you give it a image like this PNG in this case I think these are 16 by 16 yeah so you tell it in the command or yeah you I forgot exactly how you do it but you give it you tell it that you want it to be like 16 by 16 and the uh, Python utility will actually split up a tile sheet for you so in this case, it's 16 by 16. There's two of them, so it'll go boop, boop, boop. Well, actually, it'll go boop, boop, because there's two of them. And yeah, so what we want to do is we're going to go into Photoshop. We're going to open this up, and we're going to put a bunch of numbers inside of these balls so that they look different. Uh, I wanted to do a bunch of different, you know, I'll pull all the Pokemons and put them in there. Maybe I'll get around to doing that, but I think it would be easier to just put some numbers in them. So... So Mr. Blinky says you make a you make a sprite sheet with the size and the file name. That's what I thought I said earlier, but I don't see the like. Shouldn't it be like? Okay, you told me in the message window here. Hopefully, I don't dox myself here. Like this, right? Is that right? Shouldn't it be like that? Oh, okay, that's what I thought. So this should actually be like so. And let's go ahead and get ahead of ourselves here. And let's do like that, because that's what we're going to end up to. So let's open this up in Photoshop. So we can see the transparent pixels. 
What in the what? That's what? Those aren't transparent, they're green. These should what the shit? They're set. Tra they bullshit. They're set as transparent. There's the fucking background layer. Now they're set as transparent. I don't know what goofy ass. Are you using Corel Draw or something, child? <laughs> what application are you using? Please don't say Corel. Pixel. Well, however Pixel stores their PNG files is... We'll see if your application does it the same way as Photoshop and the rest of the planet does it. But that's how a PNG. Change existing image. This should still work, hopefully. Anyways, um, so what we'll do is image, canvas size, how many should we go to, to, what's a good number, 16? Ah, I said it's a transparency within front of I knew it, I knew it. Let's do 16. Oh god. And six or zero percent. Oh shit. Um, so I'm gonna make sixteen copies of this little dude here. Make sure that that is at 16. Yep. Wait. Cool. Horizontally too. Mr. Blinky tells us that you can style your sprites horizontally or vertically. How many people are watching me use Photoshop? Eight. That's insane. That's that's eight too many. Sure, zero through F seems easy to do, right? One of these rendered really good at small size. I can't remember which one it was. You know what would be cool is if I could get it so they would actually just all line up. I could just hit like enter or something. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. <gasps> that should fucking work, dude. Math, right? Ah, that was awesome. It would be easier than I thought. One, two. Yeah, zero through F would be cool. What I don't know how to count in hex, though, so I don't know what comes after nine. Oh, A, B, C, D, E, F. That makes sense. Cool. That was about 16,000 times easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to have to like line everything by hand, but I'm a fucking genius. Uh, merge, merge visible. Okay. Uh, 
I think I can just keep it in RGB. But I'm going to do that. Wait, what? Why do I have so many colors? That's not right. Uh, let's do image adjust brightness contrast. Let's just, just make sure we got all that. Ah, see, no, we had a problem there because there was like a partially gray pixel or something like that. I think this would be better. Tool converts it to one bit. I wanted to make sure that I'm in control of what happens here. We're just going to save. Cool. Should we change the tiles too? No, let's just, let's just we'll just change the balls for now. Because I don't want to have to write more code to affect the tiles also. Okay, so we modified this, so we have a bunch of sprites that have letters in them. So what do we got to do to uh, uh, recreate our um, bin file? Yeah, the, everything's named correctly. Yes. It's too small for Mr. Blinky. He has like a 1280 by 1024 resolution or something. Drag and drop on command line. Oh, because I need to run like a utility, right? But what's the file name? Oh, image converter? Just like that, okay. So, oh, I have to create, so you have to create bin files. Oh, I gotta start taking notes. Uh, create one bit PNG files. Uh, name, uh, file type, file name, so create Yeah, Mr. Blinky's telling me this is this is temporary. Uh, so just drag this here. Oof, come on. Looks like it worked. Dot PNG dot bin, huh? Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I can fix it. I need to do bin copy. What, like, uh, do I need to append one to the other or something? I can append this onto this. Or the other way around. Which one comes first? Um...
Um, what? Your command has more inputs than I have things. I'm confused. Shouldn't it just be the tile map plus this is the ball map, I guess? Well, I'm super confused. What is in tiles? I'm really confused. Oh, fucking shit. Um. How do I make it big enough so you can fucking read it? Um, you know, you can, I don't think I can make the text any bigger. Uh, uh, yeah, hold on a second. These are the files that are there. I have tiles.bin, but what what is inside of I don't understand what the difference, where did tile bit, what's tile map dot bin then? So, tiles is the font, tile map contains the text. So, then this should actually be balls, then, I guess? What is it? This is where I'm confused, man. Like, what? I don't. There's only two PNG files here. I don't know what. But what creates? What creates that?
But how do we create that? Um, um, what, uh, do you have to do that by hand? Does the tool create that? Where does it come from? Oh, uh, tile map is like the fucking map data, right? Like, is, 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 is actually, oh man, dude. Oh God. So that's like, this is my representation of map data. This is just like you. Right, that's like, that's my, you know, tile A, tile B. How this is your, this is your makeshift data format or something. Oh, ones and zeros. Okay. Okay, so this is this is the tile map. This is your actual map data. These are your picture data. So this is arbitrarily created. We don't have a tool for this or any, you're using a format now that you created, but it's not one that you're ready to release or build a tool around. Is that, is that accurate? So this is like, this is like a alpha stage. Is that, is this accurate? Is this accurate what I've done here? He's going to say yes. In 10 seconds. Ha <laughs> I was right. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Okay, use image, create. Uh, um. So, okay, so we've got this arbitrary data format, and then what was what was your concatenated? So what what dictates the order in which we create when we when we create the file? So we've got. Balls.bin, tiles.bin. Hey, for shits and giggles, I could edit the tile map. But yeah, so what determines... No, I renamed it. Uh, but what's, what, why are we doing it in this order? Like, I'm assuming it would break if I put the tile map first. Yeah, the order of the file names, like, is that according to the, how they're stacked within your program? Like, you need to make sure, okay, so you need to, you need to have your code built in order to expect it this way. So I'm, I'm guessing what we, how this tool should work in the future is that when you, when you feed it, when you feed it this data, it should have like an output screen that's like balls.bin is at this, is in this location and this one is at this location. So it'll give you like a, an order in which to use it. So this like output your format. Yeah, you need to edit the offsets in the INO file. Okay. But this 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 tool should give you the offsets, right? Maybe it does. I haven't run it yet. So you know what I want to do is I want to edit the map data though. What the f What the f
this isn't even stored as ones and zeros. It's stored as like nulls and I don't even know what an SOH is. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a strict binary file. Do I have a hex editor? I mean, this should work. I can just flip them around a little bit, right? Like these are still valid. Not in this. Do I have a hex editor? Is hex edit? HXD? Holy shit, it opened up Internet Explorer. That's so bad. Chinese, for sure I need the Chinese version. I love this meme. This is my favorite meme, like, right now in life or on things. It's the Chinese being first. It's in, um, when you install Steam, uh, Steam's install page, when it comes up, it has Chinese listed first, but English is still default. And that's my favorite it's like a philosophical saying. It's like right now, Chinese is first, but English is still default. That is, that's going to change. Brush up on your Mandarin. Nihama. I really need to brush up on my Chinese. It's actually, I haven't, I haven't spoken Chinese in God, well over a year. I don't know why you can't read my shit, man. You need a better monitor. Okay, I have a hex editor now. Look at that. So it looks like you've made your map just to be conveniently one, what, like 16, 16 columns, right? Your map data is just conveniently 16 columns so that you can draw it out in the hex editor. Yeah. What can I do here to make it obvious that we've changed something? Maybe I'll just continue the alternating pattern on the top as well, because I know that you can just do this. So now the top row will be alternating. Easy enough. I kind of like to add a third tile in there, maybe too, but no, it's that. Nah, fuck it. Fuck it in the butt. Whoa, that. Whoa, whoa. Sorry. Sorry. We got like x rated there for a second. It's a family friendly stream here. I apologize. Um, let us run the command. So we put balls, the tiles, and tile map. Drop in into what is our output file? Data file. Drop in. What? Oh, I didn't put plus. Signs in there. Son of a Okay. I think I did it. So in the future, this will this will be a little more automated, which will be cool. Are people still watching us? Five viewers, yeah, they're dropping off, man. I knew it. 
I knew this couldn't be that interesting. Now we need to cost set the, oh, so the tool doesn't do this yet, but that would be really nice if it had that, oh man. So I gotta go into this here. So this masked sprite will be what, 16 times? What? <laughs> so background tiles. Um, help, help me here, Mr. Blinky. So, I'm confused by this, actually, because the order that we put it in, so we put Balls first, right? Yeah, that's correct. rename here what the fuck application added that was that hex edit that did that yeah what's these last four four bytes do you think is that okay Uh Oh, it's the sprite. It's the sprite format. Of course. I always fuck that up when I create sprites. And then I have a little glitch in them. Um okay. Okay. And then this is going to be pl this plus 44 because we didn't change the the size of that, right? So that'll be 72 right because this this used to be 44 so this will be another 44 after it right I don't know why I can't do that in my head right now Like that.
Né? The tiles shouldn't have changed. 68 bytes? Oh, it has, I guess. It is different? It says 68, but the offset here was only 44 before. Eh. How come in the application it was the it was only forty four bytes? Uh, oh, those were hex values. Oh, they're hex values. My the forty four and eighty eight or not? Ten ninety six. So this will be nice when the, the 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 script handles this for you, and then once and then I can maybe hire like a software developer to build a front end for it, so you can just drag and drop your tile map into it and do everything from there. So are we good to go? Should work, right? Okay, so I need to make sure that I flash this with the dash D. Oh, I don't even think I have it. No, I did. Okay, whatever. Uh, Dash D. Yep. Okay. And then I take the data file. On well, the application that runs now, yeah, of course it just runs garbled data. Because the addresses are all wrong. But now I upload this code. It's not working. Uh, why? Oh, here, yeah. Oh, because this was built for the for something else. Then okay. Hope this works, hope this works, I hope this works. It looks different. <laughs> I don't think you have your graphics numbers correct because what you told me, because this is background tiles, right? No, no, background tiles, external offset. Like, is graphics one? Are we sure? <laughs> I think we have our graphics numbers mixed up. How can you not read this shit, dude? It's like fucking size 20. So I can just like switch these. I can just, can I go two and then one like that? Okay. 
That's an easy fix. Ha <laughs> Shit! What? What? Is anybody else in chat that is not Mr. Blinky still watching? Because we did something... Can we get an emoji if anybody besides Mr. Blinky is not a bot or like a lurker or some shit? Oh yeah, we haven't changed the code, but that's next. Hell yeah! And look at the look at the background. Why is it? Why does it? Huh? Why is it um? Why does it not let me go left or right? That's new. This must be old code. Or I can go up sometimes if I've gone down. This must be old code. It's not allowing me to run left or right correctly. Or something. Oh, I'm in the corner. It just stops the rotation. Oh, I got it. Okay, all right. Yeah, the buttons do suck, dude. That's like... That is part of the problem. But if you're already at... If you're already on the upper left, if you're at zero, zero, it just... And you try to press left or right, it just stops the, the rotation. Okay. Or the cycling. But you can see the top row... If I can get it to pause. Yeah, the top row there is actually still inverted. So I mean, we, I mean, we knew that we made the changes. It, it compiles and it runs. It's going to work. But cool. So um, all we have to do is change the game code to run through the the sprite sheet. Holy smokes! There's hey, what's up, Sigman? Sigid man. Glad you could join us. I'm glad you're still here. You're witnessing. You're witnessing the future. All right, so what do we got to do? We got to change our code. Hey, don't tell me these buttons suck, Mr. Blinky. You're about to inherit these. These are about to become your buttons. Um, okay. Four. So how do we step through a, how do we step through a sprite sheet? I guess we can kind of see that on, I'm going to have to zoom this out. I'm sorry. I can't. Right, graphics one should be. No, graphics two is. Oh shit! Oh, it was GFX two. Okay, all right. Hey man, I'm just looking. I'm learning. So I mean, we could set this. We can make a max balls visible 16 and just make it equal to I. But I'm going to put in another variable that cycles through 16. Oh, I divided by 16. Well... Does that always work? Does that work? But what if it does, what does it do if, uh, the fuck? Oh, modulo. Oh, I keep forgetting that that doesn't mean divide or percent or whatever. I was thinking that meant divide.
That's a cool trick. That's a damn cool trick with the hex. I think I've seen that before. That's a really cool trick with the shifting the hex bits or whatever, or or uh, whatever, zoring them. Okay. I uh, sixteen. It's like that. Yeah, that should just fucking work, huh? Okay, moment of truth. Dude! Oh no. We have... We have a problem with the code. On every odd one, it takes a... It, it gets the offset wrong. What's wrong, man? Between... So for between two and three, it's like it's 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 not moving far enough. It's only and then it it gets it right again. Huh? It is not. It's it's starting eight pixels. It's starting eight pixels too far down for the third iteration. So if I equals zero, one, two, if I equals two, the shit. Does that mean there's a problem with the draw bitmap class? No. Well, yeah, it must be a problem with this. Mr. Blinky, I'm assuming you're trying to inspect this on your side too. I'm assuming this didn't come up for the tile background because you're only using two tiles, but I imagine if you went for a third tile then... Man. Yeah. Yeah, there's got to be a bug with the draw bitmap flag so that the sprite it's just it's just some simple bug where some counter isn't getting reset when it needs to. Oh man, I'm not I don't think I'm smart enough to figure that out. Uh, where is even? Encoder? Am I editing my own version? I must be. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I was editing my version. <laughs> Whoops. No? Yeah. Um... Draw bitmap, isn't it?
I think. Yeah, I'll let you take a look at it. Um, my guess is this is the problem. Because I'm seeing this uh, minus 8. But it's actually plus 8 that's the problem. It's like this skip top thing is getting in the in invoked for some reason. Uh, I guess there's no real point for us to try to like live go through this. Everybody else has dropped off anyways. I learned a bunch about having to do all this stuff anyways. I'm going to have to do a separate video on my own where I can step through everything. Skip top isn't a problem. Well, I'll let you look into it. Here, let me send you the... Uh, uh, I'll send you this thing. Um... This doesn't even make sense to publish until we get the tool. There's too many gotchas. But I learned how to do it. And we found a bug. So live development wasn't a total loss. Uh, is anybody else in chat want to say anything? Any questions? There's a, there's a few people here, but they're like lurkers or they're like maybe in the chat and not watching the stream. I can't figure that out. It's a, yeah, there's three viewers, but we have like seven people, ten people in chat. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just go through the review steps using the development kit. And have a scripted and have like a scripted uh, tutorial shit I gotta get back to, I gotta get back to the office one of my directors was there all right mr. blinky um, yeah flash the proper bootloader that's what I'm talking about yeah it's all these different things well I was scrambling to get the dev kit together and that was my priority and that then that worked and like I said plus we found anytime we find a bug when we're doing these things and I learned something you learned something so, like I said, it was productive, but uh, definitely it's not fit for general consumption. Well, thanks, dude. I'm going to run back to the office. I will, uh, holy crap, we've been doing this for two and a half hours. Um, it must be really late where you are, so I'll let you go to bed. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.